Okay, give Big Red one more hand. Yeah. I appreciate Mr. Jesse Yates and the members of the band giving up a Thursday evening to come and celebrate with us. So uh, hopefully one day these are the folks that get to really enjoy this building like some of us have. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming tonight. This is a, a special time for us as a city and for our community to come together and uh, celebrate a project that's been years in the works. And uh, with that, there comes a lot of thanking of a lot of people before I get to a few special folks. Uh, but for what's happened tonight, I have to thank uh, Diane Gray, who you'll hear more from in a minute, Mr. Stephen Cheek, Jennifer Rigby, Melissa Steed, and Gina Devlin for their help in planning tonight and coming up with a menu of hot dogs and popcorn and drinks. And uh, so I appreciate all of them and, and their hard work. Uh, and to Tanya and Greg, you know, things like this never just happen without somebody putting in a lot of sweat and elbow grease. And uh, those two are not scared to work. And we spent yesterday afternoon up here and been up here all afternoon today and uh, decorating the windows and putting up screens and brochures and things falling on our heads. So uh, I appreciate them. And then my two main guys back here, they'll be embarrassed, but Howard Sharkey and Zary Mallard as well. So I appreciate them for coming too. Uh, speaking of the hot dogs, John Reynolds and I'll just say his family, uh, his daughter Jessica and wife Karen uh, graciously furnished the hot dog stand. Mr. Robert Hawkins at Walmart donated the hot dogs and the buns. And Miss Sarah helped with a little bit of cooking. So that was uh, mighty nice of all of them. And m and Bank has been kind enough to furnish the popcorn and the popcorn machine. So to the Board of Aldermen, they don't have to panic. We haven't spent hardly any money. <laughs> they are very, very steep. So uh, I appreciate everyone that's had a hand in that. Uh, I do want to thank the board. When you mention something like this as a mayor, you get strange looks, you get strange comments, and what in the world are you talking about kind of stuff, but they have been so supportive of this, and, uh, and I think they're all here tonight with the exception of Mr. Sullivan. I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Poplock, play your hand, Pop. Thank you. Uh, Robert Ellis is standing right there by him. Alderman Henry Daniels always trying to hide in the back. And Tim Kyle's back up this way. And I, I just appreciate their help so much on uh, having the vision to do things in the community to try to make life better for us. So uh, if you don't mind, I would appreciate one big hand for all those people I've mentioned. <laughs> now there's some other special people here. Uh, the first one I'd like to mention is about 50% of the money on this project came from the Mississippi Arts Commission. And Mr. Larry Morrissey is here by this pretty red Corvette. Uh, and he is representing the Arts Commission. And for the $133,000 they gave us, I would appreciate a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Now, uh, I've asked a couple of people to uh, say a few words. Uh, Craig Gorge, I'm probably saying his name wrong here. Where did Craig go? Craig is the architect on this project. Craig works for Belinda Stewart Architects. And Belinda, if you raise your hand. Belinda has a tremendous reputation around the state for historic reservation projects. And uh, you can go to her website and see all the gorgeous things that she's done. And uh, But she's give up the podium to let Craig, because Craig is the one we work with on this. So Craig's going to come and say a few words. He's going to be followed by Mr. Alan Ramsey uh, with Historic Renovations of Yazoo that's actually done the work and honestly was the only contractor we could get in the money with, so Alan, I appreciate that. And then finally, Ms. Diane Gray is going to come after Alan. And uh, if you were at the Cultural Center event a few weeks ago, you got to hear Diane, but she has a great story. And, uh, and I know a lot of you have hung around the door and thinking you could get a ticket and go in there and, and reminisce just a little bit. But uh, we'll talk more about the inside in a few minutes. But I'm going to ask Craig to come on, and uh, he'll start, and then we'll go for Alan and Diane. Thank you all for coming. This is, uh, this is what we really love to see at the end of the project. This is why we do what we do. And uh, it's been just a phenomenal experience working with the city. And it's been a long road. And to see this building from the first time I walked up and I was going up in a bucket truck up on the roof of the front of the building here, trying to get on the roof so we could see what bad shape it's in. But uh, it, the transformation has come from a lot of uh, uh, 
uh, research and help from Diane with a lot of historical photos and we found uh, hints of what used to be on this theater inside and buried in the walls. We didn't know this glass block was here. We actually found it through a camera and a boring of a hole in the wall and uh, we found a lot of surprises. Some good, not so, and some not so good, but uh, uh, we did end up with a great contractor on this that really cares about what he does and we really did work as a team and uh, with the city and the contractor and um, our office, I think that uh, we really wanted to make a difference and make a showcase for your community. And that's what we really come in to transform buildings and also really try and transform communities. And these types of uh, projects really lend themselves to that. So I do appreciate you all for uh, letting us come in and work with you. And uh, we hope that uh, this will spark for the next phase. And, of the uh, building and then a lot of uh, more events like this can happen in the future. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Alan Ramsey, Historic Renovations. Craig kind of summed it up. This is what it's all about, having people like you being able to appreciate the, what you used to have and what you can have again. Uh, we've enjoyed the project. It was a great one. Uh, we never know in our business what we're going to be doing on the next project, so I've never done a marquee sign and a canopy, so a lot of OJT going on here. Uh, the good news is the building is high and dry. It'll be here for as long as, you, as it takes to put together the money for the next phase, which I hope many of you will get behind that project. I think it's very worthwhile. And I hope it's not that long. And I hope, quite frankly, I get the opportunity to bid it and do the contract for you. That would be even better. My son Joshua, who a lot of you met, was kind of the chief workman on this. He couldn't be here tonight, so he sends his regrets. But he's getting married in a few weeks, so he's got his work, work cut out for him right now. And, uh, but yeah, he uh, spent many a day here recreating these little details for that the architects designed. And we're just happy to be part of the project. We thank you for the opportunity. And I made a lot of good friends. And Miss Sarah, I will not abandon you, darling. I promise I'll come back some more to see you. And, uh, you know, Kosciuszko was real good to us. So thank you very much. Our dad, Cleo Valva, was the official manager of the Strand. But it was really a two-person deal. <coughs> which included our mom, Blue Money. Together they managed the Strand from 1956 to about 1994. They raised not only five children of their own, but they raised a whole community of children who are now parents and grandparents. Before today's technology, movies were our window on the world. For many of us, our first glimpse of that outside world was seen right here in the flickering lights on the screen in the dim Strand Theater. You formed your childhood memories here. You made your first timid steps in public by yourself as parents dropped you off in front of the strand, knowing, of course, that they didn't need to worry about your safety under the watchful eye of Mr. and Ms. B. You laughed together here. You shivered in wonderful anticipation watching things that go bump in the night horror movies. You had your first date here. Many of you entered the work world trained by Mr. Balboa right here at the Strand. And so here we are today. Her exterior is restored to a youthful 1950s glow. Some parts, like the box office, reflect the bumps and scrapes of 60-odd years of living, evidence of time too precious to sand down and smooth away. She's a grand old lady, the Strand. Her cosmetic exterior is smooth and lovely. She has good bone structure, and she carries her age well. The kindness and diligence of people who have been able to see her beauty have given her a chance for a new life to once again become a vital part of our community. She waits patiently for her completion to once again welcome us inside. The Strand can continue to provide services for Kosciuszko. With the completion of the interior, she'll be a wonderful venue for small business meetings, conferences, pageants, musicals, plays, art exhibits. And how will this be accomplished? Grants and fundraising projects are, of course, an important cornerstone for the completion of the Strand. But important also is your participation and support. Her future lies in your hands. Looking at the Strand, 
I could almost hear the sound of Dad checking up in the office, jazz music playing softly in the background, or see Mom standing by the door smiling and cautioning children to mind the traffic and have a good night. I can tell you that my parents would be so pleased to see the strand coming into her own again, reinventing herself for a new age. Okay, so where are we with the building? Uh, Shirley's here, she can tell you, I'm not sure if Teresa, but we have had numerous calls. Can I rent the strain? Can I rent the strain? No. You can't go in. Uh, the inside, so that everybody's clear, and I've got all the media's here, the inside has to be totally redone. There's nothing in there that, that is workable at this time. Uh, due to the roof being in the shape it was in, it, it's got some floor rot, the ceiling, has failed in some places, so we, we have a total renovation to do on the inside, and, and you know we just try to make people aware of that. Uh, we don't have a time frame, you know. As the saying goes, we're the government, we're here to help you, but we're also very slow at it. Uh, we don't want to just waste your money and spend your money, but we want to be good stewards of it. But we do intend, and we do want to finish this at some point. So, what do you want to do with it? Well, that's a great question. From day one, we, we have tried to say that this would be a multi-purpose venue of some sort, something you could use for things too numerous for me to mention because somebody would say, you said we were going to, and, and I don't want to be pinned with that or hung with that, so I just say multi-purpose venue that, that has a lot of possibilities for numerous, numerous things to be beneficial and good for the community to use. Uh, there's renderings on the table over here that show possibilities. There's a book that Belinda Stewart's group did in 2008, that's at least how long we've been working on this, that showed possible floor layout. So staggered floor, flat floors, balcony renditions, you're welcome to look at that. If you don't have time tonight, it's always at City Hall. We'd be glad to show that to you as well. Um, with Diane's help, we've come up with the little brochures we've passed out. Uh, we have had discussions about selling brick. We have decided, my little committee that's worked very hard on things, that we don't think now is a proper time to sell brick. However, we would love donations if you care to, and you can make them to the Kosciuszko Community Foundation, that's at the KADC, and just, if you so choose, just label it the Strand Theater Project. It's that easy. We have a sign-up sheet on the table if you'd like information as it goes, for your email and your contact stuff, and we'd be glad to try to keep you in the loop. Um, and we would love to do that. Uh, so, with that, there's a, I did forget to thank one person, these two beautiful cars right here. Uh, they're not for auction, they're not for a drawing, they belong to Stephen Franks. I'm sure he would let you have them, uh, but uh, I bet they're a premium price. But they're a great addition to tonight, and I appreciate Stephen's generosity and, and uh, letting us borrow those. So it's not quite dark, but I'm not going to keep you here to dark, and I'm not going to bore you with any more talk, but we're ready to light this thing up so we could finally have some lights, camera, and action around here. So Miss Diane is going to do us the honor. We do intend to leave these on for a few nights. They, they won't be on every night in the future because they're just on a switch and not on timers. Uh, but uh, Water Light's been gracious enough to uh, turn these other lights off. And they have been very kind to help us throughout the project with putting Craig on the roof when he calls or any other time. So they have been good. So these lights are off so it'll be dark through here. So you can drive through later at night. And hopefully the windows show up and the marquee shows up real good. And again, I thank you so much for coming and supporting not just Kosciuszko, but I hope you all know downtown Kosciuszko is a special place in my heart. I was fortunate to own Parker Shoe Shop for 17 years and just took a love to the square and the downtown. <laughs> And, and a special place it is. So on behalf of those, we thank you for coming and uh, appreciate your attendance. Thank you. Come on. I'm going to walk on that side of the street up for a minute. All right, I'll be right back. Nice to meet you. Okay. Huh?
Let me have a t-shirt, Tom. I'm going to have that for I used to come here when I was a kid. Mama started dropping me off when I was about 14. I came always took clothes. Mr. Bat will always take good care of me.